matter with Jesus? I can't hear you. What's the matter with Jesus? He's all right? Can you say that once again, Deacon? Somebody say hallelujah. Let's make some noise. Amen. Unto the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we should rejoice and be glad. Amen. 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 Listen, it's so good to be here. Isn't it wonderful to be here to worship the Lord in spirit and truth? We got a little breeze on today, but we got a little breeze today, but we thank God for the opportunity to be here and worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. Minister, Minister Fulton, if you could just come and give us our opening prayer today. Just come on, Minister Fulton. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's praise God for our ministry of music. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Most High God, who has been gracious unto us. Thought it not robbery for us to be here again on this special occasion. God has been good to me. I don't know about you, but God has been good to me. Kept me from all her harm, danger, and evil. God has kept us safe from the coronavirus. God has kept us from falling. And God is good all the time let us pray father god in heaven truly we are grateful on today for yet another chance another opportunity to be able to come to this place of worship to lift you up on high to glorify your divine name to magnify you lord and the beauty of your holiness god we come to say thank you on today thank you for this joyous occasion thank you god for how you kept us from falling Thank you, God, for a multitude of blessings, seen and unseen. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. God, we thank you, God, that we are able to come together in Christian unity and love. We ask, God, for your blessing to fall fresh upon this service this morning. We ask, oh God, for a double anointing, double portion of your anointing to fall fresh on the preacher on this morning. We ask, God, for a double portion of your anointing to fall fresh on all of your servants here today, God, that we may lift you up on high, that we may come together in the beauty of your holiness and worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. So, God, we say thank you for traveling mercies across the dangerous highways. Thank you for watching over us throughout the night last night. Thank you, God, for waking us early this morning, clothing our right mind and a reasonable portion of our health and strength still intact. Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise you, and we bless your holy name. And God, we, 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 we come to say, please, Lord, look over these offerings that has been placed on today. We ask that you would take every carnality out of it, God. 
and use it for your spiritual use, for the uplifting of your kingdom. Let it bring peace, let it bring joy, let it bring happiness, let it bring fulfillment. Let your word continue to go forth, God, and watch over every movement that we make. We ask that our unity on today be bind together, God, with a cord that cannot be broken. And so these gifts, God, we offer them back unto you. We ask, oh God, that you would use them for your glory. We magnify you on today. We bless your holy and righteous name. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. In Jesus' name we pray. We praise you, Lord, because we love you. Amen. Wonder. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Does anybody know that the Lord is a wonder? So bless his name. Wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Amen. Come on, let's just give God praise, thanking him for a wonderful day. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Fulton. This time we're going to just, let's, let's receive Lady Logan. She comes just to greet everybody today. Let's receive Lady Logan. Friends and family day, we bless your name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. God is still on the throne. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we endure. And so we lift him up. We bless his name. For those on Facebook, we love you. We thank you for your encouraging words and for your support. Share this service on Facebook. Bless other family members and friends on Facebook. Let them know that we serve an all-sufficient, all-seeing, all-knowing Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider, even in the midst of a pandemic. He is still on the throne. And so we glorify him. We bless his name. We call him wonderful. Counselor, the Almighty Father, the Prince of Peace, there is nothing too hard for God. So we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your prayers. We love you. We love you. And more importantly, God loves you. Bless you. Like, oh. 
made a way for somebody here today. Did the Lord make a way for you? He made a way. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Professor, and our Ministry of Music. We appreciate each of you. This is again so good to see each of you and glad that you're here to share and worship with us here at Messiah, 210 Congress Street, right here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Listen, we don't want you to forget, just turn to the person next and say, I love you. And while you're home, to say the same thing. I love you. 
with the love of the Lord, I can see in you the glory of our King. Yes, I love you. I really love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise today. Amen. Amen. Listen, we want to say happy birthday to a few folks. Oh, Deacon Holland, is that you, Deacon Holland? Is that Deacon Holland up in there? And, and you had a birthday the other day. She just turned 25, y'all. Let's say happy birthday to Deacon Holland. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> She's going to get me afterwards. Anyway, just a few observations. We know this. As a matter of fact, some of you have birthdays coming up uh, very soon, September. So let's just start now and celebrate everyone that has a birthday in September. Happy birthday to you. And it's good to be able to celebrate life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that sounds pretty good there. I heard you, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you there, I heard you. <laughs> well, listen, just a couple of things to share with you. We want to, um, of course, thank those of you who made it out yesterday for our drive-through to be able to pick up your celebration cups and the package that our deacons and trustees put together uh, for us. And for those of you who did not get a chance to pick up your celebration cups yesterday, feel free to call the church and, and make the appointment so you can swing right on by and and pick up your celebration cup so you'll be ready for the Lord's Supper. For those of you that are not able to come out, listen, you can still celebrate with us virtually on the first Sundays, and you can have your own juice, your own water, your own breadcrumbs or crackers, and you can just celebrate with us anyhow. Amen? Amen. We also want to thank not only them, but I also want to recognize our young adult ministry. They did a wonderful job yesterday as well. Uh, amen. Let's praise God for them. Uh, Minister Matthews, Sister Matthews, Sister Dela, as well as Sister Adrian, coordinating in his wonderful community outreach. Come on, let's praise God. It's a wonderful community outreach. Uh, we had some in our neighborhood to come right on through, and they were able to receive and pick up something that will be helpful for them during this season because during this season trust me people are in need and so we are grateful that we we're able to give and you do know that god will bless you in your giving amen amen it was a great witness because they were actually related to someone that's in the community right here and so they were grateful and they we want to continue to encourage them as well as all others let's, let's praise god for the community all of our neighbors that are sharing with us today thank god for you we love you. We are right here at Messiah. Well, right before we have our ministry of music, of course, we want to remember each other in prayer, continue to check on each other, and also we want to remember Brother Dana Smith uh, in the loss of his first cousin, Sister Thrash, down in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, not only remember her, but also think about Jacob Blake and his family. I know that we don't know him personally, but remember him and his family and his condition in Wisconsin and our nation, remember our nation in prayer, and also the family of actor Chadwick Bozeman, remember them in prayer as well, amen? amen? Where there is much prayer, we believe there is much power. All right, well, let's get ready to move right on with our ministry music. Uh, good to see you, is that Prince, that's your daughter there? My sister Fuller, good to see you. I call her Young Fuller. Good to see you, amen, you doing well? School is good? No, oh, okay, I know, I know. Listen, we need to pray, as a matter of fact, we need to pray for all of our college students. Remember them because it's very difficult during this season for parents and those going back to school, teachers and parents. It's, uh, it's a little crazy right now with the pandemic, but we want to continue to lift them up and pray that God will continue to shield them, protect them, and guide them in navigating the online as well as the in-person training and education today. Right now, let's receive our ministry music and following that, we'll have the word of the Lord for today.
Amen. The Lord is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Won't you join me for a word of prayer? Lord God, we are grateful that you're faithful. We appreciate your mercy, your love, your care for us. And even as we pause for a few minutes to go into thy word, we ask that you allow your word to go into us. Strengthen our faith in you, for you said faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. We are praying for salvation today for someone, healing, encouragement, praying for someone to grow in you to a new level. We need a word from you. We are praying that even those on our, in our community that are listening now and worshiping with us, those that are on Facebook with us, we pray that you will send this word to them as well, even me. Stand with me as you always do, O oh God. Let your word be made clear that someone would be uplifted and that we all will be molded and shaped into the image of Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, we would like to draw your attention to the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter. We're gonna read verses one through five. If you are taking notes, I would encourage you to jot down verses one through 11. But for reading purposes, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it reads as follows. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. And I want to look at verse three. Verse three says, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat from the King James Version. And I'd like to talk today very briefly from the topic, relationship matters. Relationship matters. Brothers and sisters, I learned from a very early age that it is important to have the right relationships with people. And God uses people in various ways to help us to get to various stations in life I recall my first, well, my, my career actually got started, as I have shared maybe a while ago. My career got started because I was by vocation. It got started in the church. Growing up in the church as a young child, I did not realize that there was someone watching me who eventually God would use to open up the door. And once I graduated from high school and started college, that person asked me if I wanted a part-time job. And I said, well, sure, I'll take that part-time job. And I began working in healthcare, and it turned into eventually a full-time job once I graduated from college. And I began a very long journey in healthcare management for a number of years. But it began in the church with a relationship, someone watching. You never know who's watching you. But anyway, today with our racial, social, economical, political, and digital divide, we realize that our nation is in trouble and it is important that we have wholesome relationships. Can I get someone to say amen? amen. We're so divided today until it's frightening. It seems as though that's a common thing that I'm hearing now publicly. If you're watching the media, you hear even professionals and athletes and coaches, I believe it was Doc Rivers, basketball coach he said you know it's, he said it's fearful for us as black people and not only him but then i i heard even uh, other athletes come out and state crying those in baseball crying and saying we are afraid as black men and black women brown men and brown women we're afraid today of just being able to get in a car just be able to go down the street just be able to just watch birds we're, we're just afraid afraid of those who don't like us, afraid of those who might do us harm. 
Consider Jake, Jacob Blake, who was shot seven times in the back by a white police officer. This young man who's walking towards his three children in the car, he becomes paralyzed from the waist down. And this, this happens also while eventually going to the hospital. For a minute, he is handcuffed to his hospital bed for an alleged prior crime. What kind of treatment is that? Well, it was interesting, one of the news reporters interviewed some of the, uh, uh, the, interviewed the mayor of Wisconsin as well as some of the other political and community officials. And what stood out to me was Pastor Peoples from Kenosha, Wisconsin. He says, we can be a model city to the world and it will begin with developing our relationships with each other. And when he said that, that just connected with me because I knew what God had given me to share with you all today about relationships. Relationships do matter. The story of the healing of this paralytic man in our text is actually described in the Synoptic Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because they all share similar stories. However, Mark gives a more descriptive account of this event, and I like it, and that's why we're looking at it today. And so Mark's Gospel can be divided into two sections. Chapters 1 through 8 has an emphasis on the service of Jesus to others, and chapters 9 through 16 stresses the sacrifice of Jesus for others. So that's the service to others and the sacrifice of Jesus for others. Now what captured my attention in chapters 1 and 2 is the movement of Jesus while serving humankind. Now I want you to just walk with me for a minute to see the movement pattern of Jesus. Just walk with me. Listen, check this out. In chapter 1, we find Jesus in the Jordan River to be baptized by John the baptizer. Then Jesus is in the wilderness to be tempted 40 days by Satan. Then Jesus goes into Galilee to preach the gospel and he calls the disciples Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Then Jesus is in the synagogue in Capernaum where he casts out an unclean spirit in a man. Then Jesus is found in Simon and Andrew's house where he heals Simon's mother-in-law who had a fever. Then Jesus goes alone into a place to pray. Afterwards, Jesus goes into a church in Galilee to cast out devils and heal a leper. This entering pattern continues in chapter 2 with Jesus entering into a home in Capernaum. He goes there to preach while people pack the house. And notice this, that the word of God is preached by Jesus and it goes into the ears of those that are crowded in the house and not only in the house, but the immediate area. And in this packed house, while Jesus is preaching with power and authority in a way the religious leaders never heard before, there is a paralytic man who is brought before Jesus. Eventually, the paralyzed man is healed and he walks out right in front of everyone. Can you imagine that? That's just like someone here today who, who's brought here paralyzed and then eventually you get up and walk out right in front of us. I'm sure all of us will be amazed. Well, here's the question today for us to consider as we look at this text. What relationship principles can we learn from the healing of this paralyzed man? What relationship principles can we learn from the healing of this paralyzed man? There's several, but I just want to pull out a few for today. One is to surround yourself with people that value you. <laughs> surround yourself with people that value you. I'll say it again, just for the people in the back. Surround yourself with people that value you. If you look at verse three, verse three says in chapter two, let me just read verse two and three. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. And while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Can you picture this? A man who is paralyzed, being brought by four men into this packed house where Jesus is preaching. 
it was so packed that they tried to get in, but they couldn't get in. And so let me just pause before I go too far and get ahead of myself. Think about this man who is paralyzed. You know, to be paraplegic is to be unable to use the lower half of your body. People with this disability are called, of course, paraplegics. And paraplegic is a medical word for being paralyzed, again, from the waist down. And if you're paraplegic, you can't move your legs or anything below your waist. And you have no feeling in those areas either. I thought about Jacob Blake <laughs> while studying this text. Here he is right now paralyzed from the waist down. I don't believe there's anybody here that's been paralyzed from the waist down. Well, whether it's from the waist down or not, just to be paralyzed is not a, a, a situation that anyone desires. But this paralytic man in our text, think about it, he did not have feeling in his lower body and could not use his feet. He couldn't even utilize the bathroom like the average person. I'm sure many people looked at him and watched him. I'm sure a lot of people talked about him, whispering all behind their, his back in a sense, but he heard them, I'm sure. I'm sure he wasn't able to run around when he was a child, most likely, with others. I'm sure he wasn't able to jump like others. He couldn't do daily chores because he was paralyzed from the waist down. But these four friends were actively present in his life. When we don't hear anything about his parents, we had nothing about his siblings, we had nothing about his relatives, but he can depend on these four men, these four friends. And that's why I said just a minute ago, surround yourself with people that value you. Obviously, these four friends of his, they valued him. Because, brothers and sisters, they saw brokenness and initiated getting the best level of care for their friend. I'll say that again. They saw brokenness and initiated getting the best level of care. And why is that important, Pastor? I'll tell you why. Because in his condition where he could not move, obviously everybody else saw him too. But these four men said, listen, we got to do something about this. We can't move and just ignore him. Others passed him by, but these four men took it upon themselves to do something and to get some help. Verse four says something very interesting. It says, they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Check that out. These four friends were so committed to get help for their friend that they strategized and devised a plan to get this man close to Jesus. Oh, I could shout right there. Notice that they did it all together with unity. Nobody was sitting up here complaining. Nobody was pulling on one end more than the other, but they worked together to accomplish the assignment. These men worked together instead of doing their own thing. That's why you need to surround yourself with people that value you. Now think about this, they strategized getting this man who couldn't move by picking him up on his mat. They took, each of them took a corner and when they tried to get into the church house, if you will, it was so crowded, they, they said, well listen, we, we gotta get him to Jesus. Now, now how much they knew about Jesus, I don't know, but they knew enough to say we knew that there is a great chance that if we got him closer to Jesus, he would be made whole. That's, that's what we can, we can understand that. So what they did was they didn't leave him there. They didn't just stand there looking at the crowd. What they did was they went to the roof. Now, a Syrian roof had timbers laid parallel to each other about two or three feet apart. Then crosswise over the timbers, sticks were laid close to each other, forming a standard roof. And on top of this, was laid reeds and branches of trees and thistles. Then they would put a foot of soil right on top of everything. And this is what his four friends broke through just to get this paralyzed man to Jesus. See, some folk need people around them that will be a little radical to get them help. 
You know, because sometimes some people won't take the help because they feel like they might be a burden. But these four guys said, listen, yo, man, we're going to get you to Jesus. And they picked him up, took him to the roof, broke through the roof. And can you imagine Jesus standing there preaching? And then all of a sudden, some soil probably came down near him. <laughs> Maybe some fell on his head. But it's okay because these men were serious about getting their friend to Jesus. I'm still on this first point because in verse 5, it says... Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw their faith. You, you, you caught that? Jesus saw their faith. And even though you may know the Lord, brothers and sisters, there are some seasons in life where you may need to rely on a family member or a friend to exercise their faith on your behalf. Somebody ought to say hallelujah today. Sometimes you need to lean on somebody else because we can't make it by ourselves. And I don't care how long you've known the Lord. I don't care how many scriptures you know. I don't care how well you can pray. I don't care how well you can preach, you can teach, you can lay hands on the sick. I don't care how good you are. There are seasons in life where you just need somebody else just to walk alongside you that has some faith to say, baby, you can make it. Come on here. You can make it. Sometimes you need somebody like these four guys to be a little narrow. Excuse this, what I'm going to say. Listen, listen, get your narrow behind in this car because we're going to the doctor. Sometimes you need somebody just to give you that, to help you, give you that little push. I hope y'all heard this. Notice these four men, they were not in this for themselves. They were concerned about their paralyzed friend. They didn't get there and tell Jesus, well, Jesus, I know I brought my friend here. We got a friend here. But can let me tell you, you know, my foot is hurting too. I don't know if you can do something about my foot. They didn't say anything about that. They were concerned about their friend. That's why you need the right people around you that will value you for who you are and for what you bring. Surround yourself with people that value you. Secondly, I'll say this. Remember, there will always be critics. <laughs> there will always be critics in your relationships. Think about that. There will always be critics because in verses six through nine, it tells us some of the teachers and religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? Brothers and sisters, remember, there will always be critics. Now, it's understandable that they probably sincerely question why Jesus would forgive the man's sins, or at least say that. But they also knew scripture as it was passed down because these are not just any men that were saying this. These were religious people. These were people that had knowledge of the scripture. They, they had knowledge, good knowledge of the scripture and they heard about Jesus preaching. They heard about Jesus teaching. They heard about Jesus healing and casting out devils. Jesus was operating at a level never witnessed before. So these religiously edu educated individuals should have known better. And especially after Jesus told them what they were thinking and not saying with their mouths. Oh, come on here. For Jesus to be able to tell them what they were thinking without them communicating it with their mouth, somebody should say, oh, you know what? We better back up here. This is Jesus. Somebody, this is somebody special here. He is the one that, that was told that we read about that's supposed to come into the world. They should have known that. You know what, brothers? I'll say this. There's a saying, go where you are celebrated and not tolerated. Ooh. Go where you are celebrated and not tolerated. You want people to affirm you. You don't, need, you don't need a whole bunch of critics around you, but the truth is, there will be critics. Just like these religious folks here, they criticize, well, what is he doing? You would think that they would be excited either way to know that Jesus was even taking time to give this man some attention. 
But no, they are sitting there criticizing the fact that Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Well, let me give you the last point here. Lastly, Jesus will be your best friend. <laughs> Jesus will be your best friend. He will. These are some relationship principles we can learn from the healing of this paralyzed man. Surround yourself with people that value you. That's what we said at first. Remember, there will always be critics. And Jesus will be your best friend. It's right in the text. Verses 10 through 12, let me read this here. It says, so I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Jesus will be your best friend, brothers and sisters. You know, it's interesting that Mark did not capture this paralyzed man saying anything during the whole time. We don't even hear him saying like blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me because I can't walk. You didn't hear him say anything like that. You, as a matter of fact, he didn't even tell Jesus thank you. <laughs> but I'm sure the Lord knew the unspeakable joy in his heart because this is the same man who had to be carried around by others and he could not carry or walk by himself. So I'm sure Jesus knew that. Not only that, but consider this. Jesus healed his soul before he healed his body. He said, listen, thy sins are forgiven you. That's not the physical, that's internal. That was a spiritual transaction that was taking place. In other words, Jesus heals him from the inside out. That's the kind of friend that I want. That's why it's important to have the right relationship with Jesus. You know, you can have a relationship with anybody, but if there's anybody you need to have a relationship with, it's with Jesus Christ. I gotta say something about verse 11 and 12. It says, or verse 12 says, they never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. The Lord will always have a witness. <laughs> The Lord will always have somebody right near you to see how God has worked in your life, how God has saved you, how God has healed you, how God has forgiven you, and the fact that God has delivering power. The Lord will always have somebody, just like those critics were there, the Lord had the other people in the crowd when they saw this man pick up his bed or his mat and walk out in front of them they were amazed and they began to praise God. And if there is anyone you need to have a relationship with, it is Jesus. The hymn writer penned, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And if you don't know him, my brothers and sisters, if you don't know him, let me just tell you that he's bread when you're hungry. He's water. When you're thirsty, Jesus is peace in the midst of your storm. Jesus is a bridge over troubled waters. God is your refuge and strength. He is a very present help in trouble. If you still don't know him, he's Mary's baby. And at the same time, he is our creator. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to us. If you still don't know him, Jesus came into the world and dwelt among his own, even though his own received him not. Somebody ought to give God praise today. Jesus is still the light of the world. Jesus is still our savior. Jesus is still our deliverer. Jesus is still our teacher. Jesus is still our comforter. Jesus is still our defender. Jesus is still our shield. Jesus is still the lover of our soul. Jesus is still our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. If you still don't know him, let me testify and say, when I was sad, 
He made me glad when I was down. The Lord picks me up when I'm not feeling well. He heals my body. He is my best friend. He's not just a doctor. He is a healer. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Why do you say that? Because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Jesus died. I said he died on that rugged cross for the sin of the world. Jesus hung his head in the locks of the shoulder and Jesus gave up the ghost and he died on a Friday. He stayed there in a grave all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. But somebody said early, early Sunday morning, Jesus rose with all power in his hands. And because he lives, we can live also. Jesus got up with you, you, and you and me in mind. That's why I worship him. That's why I celebrate him. That's why I love him. Somebody ought to give God praise today. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Give the Lord praise. Thank God for Jesus. Our relationship with Christ is the best thing that could ever happen. That's why you need to value, hang around people that value you. Make sure you do that. Make sure you realize that there will be some critics. There will be. But also know this, that through it all, Jesus will be your best friend. People may leave you. People will flip the script on you. People will betray you. But there is someone named Jesus. Yes, he stays closer than a brother. And he will be with you in those moments when you shed your tears. The Lord will be with you when you don't know how you're going to make it. The Lord will be with you when it seems as though the money is funny and your change is strange. The Lord will be with you when you don't know. Some of you have been crying at night thinking no one's heard your cry. Maybe like this man who was paralyzed. I'm sure he shed his tears thinking no one sees me. They walk right by me. They don't care. Here it is, I'm on the ground. I can't even stand up for myself. I can't, I, I can't even, I can't even pick my leg up. I, I, I can look at it, but I can't pick it up. My body is not like others. What's, why is it? Others can wear pants properly and I can't. He was broken. But yet God used these four men, his friends, not to ignore him, but to stop by and help him get closer to Jesus. Who are you hanging with that's helping you get closer to Jesus? We need the Lord and we need each other. I need you and you need me. I don't care how educated one is. I don't care how much money someone has. I don't care how, how well someone smiles. We all need each other in this world. No matter what your racial background is, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. We all need each other. Professor, could you all share that with us? While we think about this, and if you know the song, you can sing right along. I need you. Stand with me. It is his will that every need be supplied. The Lord is concerned about you. I need you. I need you to survive. Maybe there's someone here today 
you heard this word and God spoke to you remember the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness listen if any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And if you're here and you want the Lord to come into your life, or if you're watching us and listening to us, worship with us through social media platforms, all you have to do is ask the Lord to come into your life, and he will do it. He says, your sins are forgiven because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross just for you. He will do it. Can I get a witness? The Lord will save you. He will come into your life. He will give you a new outlook on life. Despite conditions, he'll help you to still keep moving forward. Tell somebody, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward because the Lord is with you. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. And if you're watching my Facebook and you want to become a part of the fellowship here at Messiah, you can do so. Go to MyMessiahBaptist.com, go to our website, send a message to us, or you can call the church, and you can then let us know, and our deacons will follow up with you. You're welcome to become a part of us. It is his will that every need be supplied. Let us stand, everybody, while we sing this. I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Tell the person next to you, you are important to me. I need you to survive. If you're at home, tell the person next to you that you're important to me. I pray. You pray for me. I love you. I need you. I can't make it. Without you. It is his will. Every need be supplied. You can make it, brothers and sisters. You can make it. We're going to make it. Through all of our brokenness, through all of our issues, even in this pandemic, I believe we're going to make it. We're going to keep leaning on each other. We're going to keep praying for each other. We're going to keep praying for our nation. We're going to keep walking, keep marching, because we are resilient people, because the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you, brothers and sisters. The Lord is with you. And if God be for you, come on here. Who can be against you? Jesus loves you. He cares for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. What I love about the Lord is that he knows every need and he knows how to bring healing to the need. And he will use someone to stop by. It might be a listening ear. It might be a prayer. It might be a smile. Whatever it is, God will use somebody to help you move forward in the midst of your brokenness and get you closer to Jesus and get your healing. Thank the Lord for you coming out today and worshiping with us. Thank God for this man in the text who was paralyzed. He went to church broken. Went to church, couldn't move one way. But he left out different from the way that he went in. And I pray that some of you today, you came in one way. And maybe you weren't physically paralyzed. But if you look at your life, there's an area in your life that's not moving. There's an area in your life that you're not as productive in. But somehow, when you heard the word of God, God gave you strength. God said, you will survive. You will make it. And he's going to move. He's going to move in your life in a special way. Get up and keep on walking. Walk right in front of your critics. And say, look at me. I have been set free. Come on, let's praise God for the word today. Praise God, praise God for worship. I love you. I love you.
going through loss. You see Brother David Smith. You see him and his family and those that are down in Florida as they prepare for arrangements of his first cousin's thrash. We pray, oh God, that you will not only be a comfort for them, but also we pray for Jacob Blake and his family. Pray for our nation that you bring healing the racial divide and the brokenness, the political landscape that's so corrupt. We still yield to you because we know that you're King of Kings and you're Lord of Lords and you're still on the throne. We pray for actor Chad Bozeman's family, thanking you for his life, thanking you for his witness, thanking you for his, the gift that you gave him and how you use him as a gift to the world. We pray, oh God, that as we go out today, that we will walk out freer more productive in an area of our life that we came in broken, like the man who was paralyzed. Thank you for the lessons that you taught us today, that relationships matter. And for those that gave financially, we thank you for them. And for those that are going to give online through Givelify, we thank you for their giving as well, asking that you will continue to strengthen them and pour back into them all that they've given out for the building of, of your kingdom here through the Messiah Baptist Church ministry. This is our prayer that we offer unto you. And now, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each of you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, I need you to survive. I'm gonna pray for you, you pray for me. I love you. I love you.